Welcome to another woodland photography edition of the vlog. So yeah, here in this beautiful, beautiful woodland this morning. And actually I drove through some amazing conditions to get here this morning. I left at about five o'clock this morning and about a 30 minute drive to get here. But yeah, some beautiful conditions, real heavy fog with the sun bursting through. But as always, you get to your location and it isn't quite the same, is it? So, but that being said, We've still got some beautiful, tranquil, calm conditions here, which is great for woodland photography. But today I'm going to be talking about getting sharp photos in the woodland as well. So I've got a few little tips that maybe might help you next time you're out shooting some woodland photography. But before we get onto that, I'm going to set up this little shot here. I'm going to talk you through what I've got set up. I've got the camera on the tripod. I've got my 50 to 140 f2.8 lens on, and I'm about 100 mil, so I've got the tripod fully extended to get over the top of these ferns here. I've got this beautiful, beautiful glade of ferns that's absolutely gorgeous. I'm having to set up quite high to get over that, so I've got the two second timer on the camera there just to make sure I've got no camera shake whatsoever. Ground's quite spongy as well with all these fallen fern leaves as well, so yeah, I've got to be really careful about camera shake. I've got my image stabilisation turned off because I'm on the tripod there. Yeah, I'm going to shoot this image now and then we'll get on to some tips about getting sharp images when we're out in the woodland. So as I was on a little scout around this area here, something just caught my eye and essentially I think it's more about light than anything else and framing. So we've got this natural tunnel in the woodland and beyond this natural tunnel of overhanging branches, it looks like there's a break in the canopy and that's essentially creating some uh, light actually in the background there. So we get this sense of backlighting, although I think the light actually is coming from this direction. Can't really tell at the minute because it's so overcast. And in the centre of the frame, we've got this very, very old silver birch tree with a gnarly, darkened trunk, which is also moss covered as well. In the foreground, we've got some ferns which lead the eye towards the trunk as well. And lots of overhanging branches which bend and almost touch the trunk. So there's lots, lots going on in this image. And I'm hoping the light is gonna allow us to create something quite nice. So I'm at f9 and I've got a quarter of a second shutter speed. So this kind of what leads me on to my first bit about uh, getting sharp images in the woodland. So for example this morning we've got very very overcast conditions and the light is very very flat. Uh, I think we're at about seven o'clock now so you know quarter of a second at f9 if we don't have a tripod we're just not going to be able to get sharp images. The only thing we'll be able to do if we were going to shoot a scene such as this, handheld would be boosting our ISO up. So yeah, to successfully handhold this image, I'm going to need to boost my ISO up to 2000. And that's really not something I personally would like to do for my woodland photography images. It's really going to soften the image up and make it grainy. So I think a sturdy tripod is essential for woodland photography because quite often we're shooting in misty conditions or there's a heavy canopy above us and that really creates that lack of light. And without light, obviously, you know, we're not gonna be able to handhold our camera unless we've got some really good image stabilization. So this camera does have image stabilization, which lets you, you know, shoot in darker conditions. But even then, when we're introducing a telephoto lens like I am now, and I'm at around about 80 mil, handholding is incredibly difficult, especially when we've got fine details and we're trying to get that, you know, maximum sharpness out of our image. So a sturdy tripod is essential for woodland photography, I, I feel anyway, and uh, I wouldn't ever go to the woodland without a tripod. That being said, you can get handheld images in the woodland, but you just need the right conditions. Anyway, let's get into this shot a little bit more and let's take this image. So yeah, we've got this natural framing. The light again is flat 
and um, yeah I'm going to reduce my ISO back down to my original setting which is 200 and bring my shutter speed down to actually we're around about quarter of a second and I'm manually focusing this lens on the silver birch tree in the background and essentially there's about four or five meters between our foreground trees and our main focal subject and that's why I'm at f9 which kind of brings me on to my next thing and that's depth of field. Depth of field is incredibly important for getting sharp images. Now depth of field is obviously a creative choice isn't it so if you want to be able to get sharp images from front to back you're going to need a very very large depth of field but we don't always want to do that in the woodland sometimes we want to pick out a subject so essentially you just need to work out what it is you want to be able to shoot what you want to be in focus and then adjust your depth of field accordingly. So for this image, essentially I'm making sure that my focus is between the, the tree in the left hand side here and my main subject. So at F9, focusing on my subject is giving me sharpness between those two points. And that, you know, that's really important for being able to get a sharp image, working out your depth of field. A few weeks back I was in this exact same woodland and it was raining. I was taking that image if you did see the vlog if not I'll leave the link for it in the description um, but I essentially I had two repeating patterns two trees with repeating patterns and I wanted to be able to get my foreground tree really really sharp but my background tree I wanted it to fall away just slightly out of focus now not completely blurred but just a little bit out of focus just to create a bit of separation between the two and it was just a case of playing with my aperture to make sure I could achieve the look I was going for and if I chose uh, too shallow of a depth of field there I would have lost the texture in the trunk of the trees behind and then I would have lost my composition but gaining just enough sharpness in it uh, just allowed me to create a little bit of separation between the two because it was if it was pin sharp it almost looked like it was on the same focal plane but having that little bit of uh, fall off in terms of depth of field just allowed me to create a little bit of separation but still get the detail that I was after so being able to create the depth of field, being able to choose the right depth of field is incredibly important for getting sharp images. Anyway, enough waffling. I need to get this shot taken and I'm hopeful that it's going to be a good one, <laughs> but who knows. So again, uh, focusing on the tree there, F9, giving me enough depth of field to get my foreground trees in focus and sharp and my main subject nice and sharp too. So going to go for a two second timer and go ahead and take the shot Time for a quick coffee guys. So no brewing here in this woodland uh, because this woodland is sited on some peat bogs. Obviously peat is very flammable so we're not allowed to have any naked flames here. So brewing coffee before I leave is essential uh, <laughs> to get me through the morning. So there's a few things to think about when we're out shooting woodland and that is obviously depth of field like we mentioned before our focal length will have a big part to play in that obviously the longer we go into the focal range the narrower our depth of field will be so therefore we're going to need to push that aperture narrower to be able to create a larger depth of field and obviously if we do that then we're going to start you know going higher into the f numbers so we might like a few weeks ago i was shooting at f18 something i never do really but um, getting to know your lenses is essential really to know how far you can push them so every lens will introduce some softness when it gets above say f10 or something like that every lens is different so you need to take a look at your own lenses but yeah you'll start to get some diffraction as the lights pass through the lens when the aperture is very very small and that softness can you know obviously take away that sharpness of the image so getting to know your lenses is really really important so yeah, i advise testing all of your lenses and it's something i highly recommend you do just 
play around with it, take some test shots at different F numbers just to see where your maximum sharpness falls and then that might influence your decision when you're out in the field next time shooting. Another thing to think about too is motion blur and obviously we've got the camera locked down on the tripod, that's not moving so we've eradicated camera shake but we might get a little bit of movement now, you can just see some movement in the branches behind me, we might get a little bit of movement and if we're at a very very slow shutter speed like I was earlier at second then we might start to see some of that motion blur in our image and then that, obviously that motion blur is going to make our image feel soft. Now, it's a creative choice too, because maybe we want to show some of that motion blur, we want to accentuate the conditions, we want to show the viewer that it was windy or it was stormy. So again, it's a creative choice, we don't always have to freeze that motion, but having, um, having that thought process in mind to start with will perhaps help you in the future if things are moving around. Um, essentially what we might do is boost our ISO to be able to increase our shutter speed. And by boosting the ISO a few stops means we can increase our shutter speed and freeze that motion. Yes, okay, we're going to get a little bit of a softer image in terms of the fact that we've boosted the ISO, but then freezing that motion is probably going to make the overall image sharper. So it's just a case of playing around with the exposure triangle, your depth of field, and try to create uh, a nice exposure triangle that works for the situation that you're working in, so the correct ISO, the correct shutter speed, and the correct aperture for the depth of field that you wish to achieve. And I would always suggest working with uh, your aperture setting first, because depth of field essentially is probably the, my top priority in terms of uh, the way I want the image to look, uh, what I need to get in focus, and what I need to get sharp. So I hope those few tips have helped you or may help you next time you're out in the woodland. I'm going to enjoy my, the rest of my coffee and uh, take a walk back to the car. So if you, uh, if you enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing and liking. I'll leave a few more videos up there for you guys to check out if you haven't seen those already. And I'll see you next time, guys. Take care.